I'm Bobby and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to make a greenhouse. Today we're at Josh's house. On the side of his house he has a really large open space and his wife has always wanted a greenhouse so we're going to build one to go here. This is going to be a lean-to style greenhouse. It's not going to be attached to their main house. It's not going to be embedded in the ground. And there's a bunch of different ways to make greenhouses. This is just one of them. Now the first step here is to clean off this wall because this is all going to be covered up by the back wall of the greenhouse. We're going to do that now. To give you an idea of how big this is going to be, it's going to be 6 feet off the wall and 12 feet long. Each one of these sections in the concrete is 3 feet, so we're going to have 4 of those, 1, 2, 3, 4, and it's going to end right here. Now the door to the greenhouse is going to be right on this end, so you can walk around from the back door and walk right inside. We've got a whole stack of 2x4s here that we're going to use for the entire construction and we're going to start by making the floor. The floor joists are going to be 2x4s 16 inches apart, 16 on center, and the entire thing is going to be 12 by 6 If you wanted to scale this down by 4 feet, that would be super easy to do. You can make it 8 feet or 4 feet or whatever you want. For this, I'm going to use a pneumatic framing nailer, and a lot of times people confuse this with a roofing nailer because it's got a coil. There's actually a coiled and a straight version of both roofing and framing nailers. I'll have this linked down below as well as all the other stuff we got at Lowe's in case you want to check it out. So far I've only put in this one and one down there. These are four feet from the outside edges. Now I said earlier that we were going to put all these pieces 16 inches on center and we're not actually going to do that. 16 is the minimum spacing to make sure that the floor is fully supported. Instead of 16 inches we're going to break each one of these areas down into three equal segments and just put the 2 by 4s there. We've got the frame laid in place and this is not its final position. It's actually going to be closer to the wall, but we have to be able to work on the back of it before we push it up against the house. And also, we can't level the ground underneath it without completely grading this area, which we don't want to do, until we get it into its final position. We'll deal with that later on, but for right now, I'm going to start building out the back face of this and nailing the pieces in place so that we can get the back complete, move the whole thing into place before we do the rest of it. I've got the vertical pieces up on the back and they're really floppy right now because they're only connected at one little spot on the bottom. But we're about to tie them all together with one 2x4 going all the way across, then we'll have at least kind of a stable wall. Now at this point there's nothing to stop it from going forward and backward, so we're also going to build the front wall and then connect the front to the back at the top corners and that'll at least give us a stable structure for today. We thought this area of ground was pretty level, but once we got the frame pushed into place, we saw that it wasn't going to be good, so we decided to stop work and figure out a way to get the surface level all the way across. Now, like I mentioned before, you could grade the surface ahead of time, but we didn't really want to do that. So instead, we used some 2x4s to act as feet going all the way from the frame to the ground. We used two levels on the frame and worked our way from one end to the other, making sure that the entire thing was level, and now we've got a great surface to build on. We got this outer frame put on, but I'm not going to nail these two pieces in yet. I'm going to screw them in instead because eventually we want to take them out so that we can lay down the floor panels on the floor joists.
Now we're ready to lay down the floor, and this is gonna be two layers. The first is half inch pressure treated plywood. We've notched it around the two by fours, we've laid it down, and we're gonna use decking screws to hold it down. Then on top of that, we're gonna use some outdoor siding. This is a composite, it can get wet, it'll be just fine, and it actually is gonna look a lot better on the floor than just regular plywood. We got the floor put down, now we're gonna finish putting the uprights on the sides. Just to make sure that this is parallel with this, we've got some spacers on the top and the bottom. You can just slide it all the way over and nail it in place. The framing is now complete. We've got the floor down, and now we're gonna start wrapping the outside of this with some paneling. We took the offcuts from these floor pieces. These are gonna get nailed onto the walls right here and then wrapped in some trim just to make them look better. Now the clear part of the greenhouse is gonna go on top of these pieces, but we'll get to that in a little bit. To cover the outside of the greenhouse, we ordered these 4x8 sheets of plastic, and we couldn't get them at our local store, unfortunately, but luckily if you order from Lowe's.com, you can have them delivered to your local store for free. Then you just gotta go pick them up. This plastic actually comes with a white sheet on the outside that you could leave on if you really wanted it to not be fully clear. Some people actually paint the inside of greenhouses white to cut down the amount of heat, but that's up to you whether you leave this on or take it off and have these pieces completely clear. And I think in this case, we're gonna pull these off. This is basically the same stuff that you would find on a political sign. It's two pieces of plastic with a corrugation on the inside. And so since it's thin plastic, you can easily cut this with a utility knife. So we're gonna set it down into the trough that we've made down here, cut it off at the top, and then connect the panels. I said I was gonna use a utility knife and that would make more sense if you were cutting this way in between the corrugations, but we actually have to cut across them, so instead we'll use a circular saw. We've got these roofing screws that we're gonna to use to put this stuff on. It has a washer and a gasket, and really, in this case, that's really just gonna help not crush the plastic as we screw these in.
While Bob's in the garage cutting up the rest of the pieces for the roof, I have to worry about the door. This doesn't need to be really heavy. Uh, we're gonna use some of the same plastic for the top and some of the same trim for the bottom. And so I'm gonna frame this out nice and simple using pocket holes and three quarter inch material because again, it doesn't need to hold a lot of weight. I've got the door made up, it fits the space just fine. And before I add the plastic, I'm gonna attach it to the greenhouse with these spring hinges so that when you let go of the door, it just closes. Uh, we still have to add a little bit of trim to the outside and maybe some bracing so it doesn't sag. But while I work on this, Bob is up working on the roof. I've got the center panel on the roof and I put this on the same way that we did the stuff on the outside. It's got a channel on each side so we can slide on two more pieces, but we also have to cut some holes in this, oddly enough. We need to add some vents to make sure that it doesn't get too hot on the inside. We can open these vents and let some air out. So I'm gonna get a jigsaw up here and cut a hole. To make the flaps on the top of the roof, I cut down a few more pieces of this, and then I also cut down one piece that's a little bit smaller. This is gonna act as my template, so I can lay this on the roof, trace this shape, and then cut it out, and I'll be sure that the flap is gonna cover it enough on each side. Then I'm gonna put the flaps in place with some flex tape. We chose flex tape for this because it's a waterproof tape. It's used often to seal up leaks or things like that. Water is not gonna mess up the adhesive, and in this case, that will work out really well because it's gonna act as a hinge exposed to the elements, exposed to rain and the humidity on the inside of the greenhouse. If you make a greenhouse like this, I do have one recommendation. Don't do it in the summertime because it's insanely hot on the inside. I've got to put a few more screws down here to attach this last panel and then we're going to run a circular saw down the front edge to get a nice clean cut on all of these panels. I also wanted to point out one thing. In this particular case, we're going to run some lag screws through the back of the frame into the house to make sure this thing stays down. But if you live in an area where you have to deal with high winds, maybe hurricanes, you want to look at how you're supposed to strap something like this down so it stays in place in those situations. Just be sure to check your local code. I got both events put in on the top and Josh cut some little pieces of wood that can be clipped into place to keep them open. And when you're ready to close them, you just pull those pieces out and they'll fall down. Now that will give us air out, but we also need a way to get air in. And for that, we're gonna use these registers. These are AC registers. These are specifically made for high humidity areas and they can be open and closed. So we can cut some holes right down here, put a register here and one on the other side, and then this thing will be done. Thank you. 
So here it is, the final greenhouse. Now there's a bunch of different ways you could do this. There are tons of different designs for greenhouses. This one was made specifically to go up against the house. In fact, because it's up against the house, we ended up not even putting a back wall on it because it just uses the house and it's holding plenty of heat on the inside. We chose the plastic for this, but honestly, this stuff's pretty expensive and there's a bunch of different options that you could use to cover a greenhouse of any type. You could use this stuff or you could use the white version of it, which is a lot cheaper and will actually create a little bit of shade. You could take plastic sheeting on a big roll and wrap each one of these sections. It's gonna be a lot cheaper, but not as strong. The construction for the greenhouse is pretty much universal, but depending on where you live and what the temperatures are like, you may need more vents or fewer vents. You may need a fan, you may need a heater. There's a bunch of different options that will all depend on where you live. Huge thanks to Lowe's for sponsoring this video. We got everything that we used in this project, tools and materials, either on Lowe's.com or at our local Lowe's store. We'll have links down in the description for everything so you can go check it out. We've got tons of other types of project videos for you, and if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that as well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. See you next time. We've got a whole pile of two by fours here, and I'm gonna attach it now with some spring hinges so that whenever the door, uh, fart. I think it's fine for what we're planning on to do. But if you live in an area with high winds, maybe if you have to...